Ari, viewer requested video that I was going to do anyway eventually. But Jeffrey Jesus, who is like the son of Jesus, he wanted us to look at this story. This is Captain America by Marky Mark Griswold, my favourite writer. And hands down, the best Captain America writer ever. This story, though, is regarded as his worst Captain America story. And one of the worst comic book stories ever. Up front, I will say it is not very good. Uh, this video is going to be clunky because, much like the story itself, I'm going to be a bit all over the place. I'll start with the obvious part, the main story beat, the idea that everyone remembers. Captain America, he becomes a wary wolf. And it's executed terribly. Uh, the plot is that when he is a wary wolf, he is captured and he is imprisoned with all the other wolves. And he leads a rebellion with all the other wary wolves standing up to their oppressors. Terrible. It's it's really, really bad. Even if you remove the wary wolf elements, just generally a Captain America story where he leads a revolt against slave masters or whatever, it's it's a very tired plot line. Then you add the stuff like the wary wolf element and it's just not done well. Captain America transforming into a wary wolf you could do that story quite well. You could make it work. Like, if you did more of a horror approach, or it was something like the Metal Morpheus, well, this just plays it completely straight. There's no real drawback to Captain America being a wary wolf. Also, most of the time, he just looks like a cute little husky, rather than, like, a scary wary wolf. Okay, though, that is the worst part of the story covered. So now I'm going to go through it all and talk about what happens. And uh, part of the problem is that there are too many ideas going on at once. Part 1, issue 402. We start off and Captain America, he has gone in search of his friend, J.K. Jameson Jr., who, of course, used to be Man Wolf. Uh, and there is some precedence for wary wolves in Captain America stories. Uh, there was a Steve Engeltine issue. Uh, they introduced one of the Villians who was in this story, uh, Nighty Sides. And in that original story, she transformed Falcon Man into a wary wolf. So, going into this one, we have we've like a perfectly reasonable entry point for Captain America and Wary Wolves and even the idea of making Captain America into a Wary Wolf. Uh, there's Dennis Demolition, the smelly homeless person according to Kurt Busey. He came back at the end of Operation Galaxy Quest. Uh, but yeah, Captain America, he gans to investigate some Wary Wolf sightings because he suspects that it might be J.K. Jameson Jr. Having reverted to a wary wolf. Flashback cameo appearance by Spider-Man. Uh, here we are introduced to a new character. One of the villains for this story. He's called Moonstalker. He's alright really. He's like a wary wolf hunter. And you can see here he's like captured a bunch of them. And he's whipping them. Uh, Captain America though. First he gets to see J.K. Jonah Jameson. To see if his son... Has been in touch and for all the negative reaction to this story this is a really good scene then captain america he wants mystical help because he don't really know how to handle wary wolves and doctor strange isn't available so he instead goes to disgraced rapist avenger dr drew marky mark as well as roger thomas for some reason they wanted to try and redeem dr drew even though he is just a terrible person. But this story is one of many by Marky Mark where Dr. Droom... Well, characters just didn't really address the fact that he mentally enslaved She-Hulks. Or he left Darth Knight for dead. 
and he pushed the team to breaking point in a quest to get his dick wet. So Captain America and Doctor Droom, they go to investigate the wary wolf sightings and they get attacked by one. Uh, another element of this story is it's quite a standard Marky Mark thing. He's doing a big wary wolf story, bringing in all Marvel's various wary wolf characters. And like, it's a big epic storyline that brings them all together. And sadly, that is all undercut by the disastrous stuff with Captain America becoming one of them. Uh, as you can see here, Moonstalker, he captures this one. Uh, I believe this is like an odd Iron Fist Villayan. Uh, that is the end of part one though. And there's not really wrong with the story so far, is there? Uh, the trade though, the trade doesn't collect the backup stories, or as I call them, subplots that are not interspersed with the main story. Uh, I believe they were all focusing on uh, Captain America's girlfriend, Rachel Diamond, and Red Skullman, and Crossbone from Captain America The Winter Shoulder 2. Uh, Wolfman, he is prominently in this story because uh, even though he is just named after a wolf, well, that's pretty much the only reason he's here. So Captain America, he tries to fight Moonstalker and Doctor Droom, well, eventually Tom Beaver writes him in Defenders and makes him back into the creepy little rapist. And that kind of causes you to reevaluate stories like this and... You do start to notice things like, well, Dr. Droom, he's not really helping. So Captain America, he's fighting Moonstalker. Uh, Moonstalker, he appears in some more Marky Mark Captain America stories. And then never, ever again. He does not have a single appearance that isn't in Marky Mark's Captain America. Uh, I'd probably bring him back, not as like a major character, it'd just be nice to do like a little catch up with him, see what he's up to now. Uh, he does have a very 90s design, but it's alright. Uh, Wolfman there, he shows up, he was investigating the wary wolf sightings as well. And then uh, here she's obscured, but this is 90 sides. Uh, as I said, she's an odd Captain America villain. Uh, she was also she was also in a few Hulk books as well. I remember one where she seduced the Hulk. And that makes sense because she is quite sexy. Uh, she's performing evil science on one of the wary wolves that Moonstalker has caught. And it's a very, very confusing and pointless juxtaposition here. We've got the bad guys here operating and experimenting and creating wary wolves. And then we cut to Avengers House and Dennis Demolition is having a medical checkup and this is just terrible. This isn't actually contrasting anything. There's like no serious similarity between the two. It's like, well you can see there you've got Moonstalker in the background and you've got Alfred in the background there. It's, it's like it's trying to say something but it doesn't know what it wants to say. So we're back with the action and, oh, this bit is funny down here. Dr. Droom, well, when all the fighting's going on, he's just having a nap. He goes, I was just sleeping after I did all I could for myself through meditation. I decided to rest until you returned. Uh, Dr. Droom, his involvement in this story is pointless, but... Reading it from the perspective that he is disinterested and is just helping Captain America because he is curious, it does add some to the character's role. Uh, obviously, it, it wasn't intentional. Uh, Marty Mark, he was completely serious about trying to redeem Dr. Droom because it was in Issues of Avengers that he edited where Dr. Droom was like the biggest twat imaginable. Uh, here we got 90 sides, good luck at her, and I do mean a good luck, because she is good looking. We're also introduced here to the main baddie for this story, who is obscured by shadows. And again, in a classic Marky Mark style, uh, this character, the baddie, turns out to be an obscure ad, Captain America and Sam Jackson Villayan, called Drew Drew. Desmond Drew Drew. 
So Wolfman is fighting a bunch of wary wolves. I think one of them's meant to be like wary wolf at eight. Then we have a fight between Wolfman and Moonstalker. Uh, Wolfman, he's partly in this story just because it was the 90s and he was popular and he was a real sales draw. Uh, he really is only tangentially related to the whole wary wolf concept. But here we see that Nighty side and Drew Drew, they have transformed the entire town into wary wolves. Uh oh, how are they gonna get out of this one? That's the end of part two, and well, it's still fine, isn't it? Like, so far, I would say there's nothing really wrong with it. It's a bit lacking in some regards, but it's not like outrageously bad or unreadable. So we're on to part three now, the obvious Captain America fighting Wolfman part of the story. We start off the surrounded by werewolves, and we have some more great Dr. Droom bits. Uh, Captain America, he's fighting against all these wolves and Dr. Droom, he just levitates off and sits up in the sky, supposedly meditating. So Captain America, he perseveres and we get our first real hint of where the story is, unfortunately, Ganon. Nighty Sides is experimenting on Wolfman. Uh, Moonstalker beat him in a fight and captured him. I think I forgot to say that, but she tries to transform him into a wary wolf, but it doesn't work because of his infamous Elan powers. Uh, part of the problem with this story is that, well, the wary wolves, they are not scary. That would be like a chief complaint of the whole story. Uh, wary wolves, they began as horror characters, and here it's all Tret, a bit goofy. They either look like adorable puppies or they're just not scary enough they're not threat like a real threat so uh yeah drew drew he is hungry for power and he wants to be god of all the wary wolves and a big part of this is to pair him and contrast him with dr droom uh, it makes a lot of sense they are two characters that are very very similar they are magic peoples who are in the Stone Edge and Celtic sorcery. Uh, Moonstalker, though, he's just like he's just like a bounty hunter. He's a mercenary. Uh, he's a hunter. Uh, he isn't quite privy to what's really going on. Uh, then we have got uh, Nighty Sides using her seductive powers or brainwashing or whatever. She unleashes Wolfman on Captain America and Doctor Droom. Uh, although this bit, this bit is a bit confusing because they show Nighty Sides in her costume with a mask on and they haven't actually shown that yet. And she doesn't really wear the mask for the rest of the story. I think this is the only panel where she's wearing a mask. So Captain America versus Feral Wolfman. And again, you'll notice Dr. Drew must have just stepped aside because... He's nowhere to be seen. They're fighting for like four pages and he is just conspicuously absent. Wolfman, he wins the fight and then Moonstalker shows up and drugs Captain America. And we end part three with the story taking a nosedive. Nighty Sides has got Captain America on her operating table. And we all know where this is Ganon. Uh, the story, it has been fine so far and now it just jumps off a cliff. But frustratingly, the elements that could work are still there. It was nice for Nighty Sides to switch colour schemes between issues as well. But there we have it, across two pages. Nighty Sides transforms Captain America into a wary wolf. This could work, it really could, it's just executed all wrong. Like, we've had four be a frog before. And Spider-Man, he's been a spider and a lizard. But this is just this is just goofy. It's Tread's straight face. They've got this insanely silly idea of Captain America transformed into well not even a wary wolf really. He he's like adorable. He's like a Labrador. He's Labradorable. And he's running around with his shield and it's just serious. They're playing it all completely straight. Uh, there's our first real look at Desmond Drew Drew. 
Uh, this character never appeared again after this story. I wonder why. But yeah, Dr. Droom is still around. And he's completely not fussed about what's going on with Captain America. He's more interested in investigating all the magic that he has felt in this town. And finding out about Drew Drew. Uh, and again, to continue my far more interesting reading of this character's involvement. You could argue that he's like coveting this magic space stone that Drew Drew has been using to control the wary wolves or something. Uh, but there's Drew Drew in his costume. Uh, they used this image in his Andy book entry. So now we have got... Uh, I mean, just look at him there. That's that's just cute. That's like a domestic pet. Not a scary hound of the night. So now we get a rematch. Wolfman and Captain Alsatian. Meanwhile, the far more interesting side of the story with Drew Drew... Him and Dr. Drew, they are having like a mind war. And then Captain Alsatian. Oh God, he's got all these little inner monologues. And it's like, it's like exactly what you're expecting it to be. And despite him being transformed into a puppy, they really didn't do that much with it. They could actually tell this exact story just with this aspect removed. That's how... That's how irrelevant it ultimately is. You could just have, like, regular Captain America have him be captured with the wary wolves and Or even just have him release them without, like, the lycanthropy. We're on to part five now, and Captain America is leading all the poor, abused, captured animals. we got Wolfman. Uh, this one's the Iron and Fist buddy. Uh, I think this one's meant to be Wary Wolf at 8, but drawn really badly. And this is Wolf's Girl from The Excellent Men. Uh, so yeah, he's thrown in a cage with the other captives. Uh, there is J.K. Jameson Jr. Remember him? That whole plot that was the whole starting point of this story that hasn't been mentioned for like three issues. And you'll notice that I'm having less and less to say as the story starts getting worse and worse. Uh, I feel like, I do feel like uh, Wolf's girl here, she should have been brought in earlier. Uh, we also have a, another strand starting now with excellent force, or rather just cables. Because substitute Wolf's girl from excellent force, she has gone missing, so cables is gunning out on her. Got a little cameo there from Shatterman. Uh, this is a very early guest appearance from Cables. So we've got all these wary wolves drawn from Marvel Continuity, and they're all teaming up and they make they make a human pyramid. Well, not even a human pyramid, because they're not humans, but yeah, this is just this is just bad. Uh, so they all break out. Meanwhile, Moonstalker, he starts to realise he's working for a crazy super villain. And Drew Drew, he's going to sacrifice Dr. Droom to bring the big wolf god to Earth or something like that. Uh, so they beat Nighty Sides and Moonstalker. And they're going to stop Drew Drew. But Drew Drew, he slits Dr. Droom's throat, which you think would kill him, but... The blood sacrifice, it empowers the magic space wolf stone. And that's the end of part five. Part six here, this is the last part of the story arc. But there's still another issue after this with Captain America as a wary wolf. As you can see, he's fighting cables in this one. And Drew Drew, he has become the wolf god. And... This could have been a good little story about a villain becoming really powerful and being thwarted by the heroes. But we've got all this silly Captain Alsatian stuff going on. So they fight and it's hard to take seriously. Uh, then we've got the subplot with Substitute Wolf's Girl who isn't even in the story really. We see her arrive at the town and then Cable shows up behind her and tranquilizes her. Also, Cables is wearing a different costume to what he was last issue. 
And for the first meeting between Captain America and Cables, this is absolutely not what you were hoping for. I think the first meeting between those characters could have proved really interesting and had some story potential, but instead we've got this. And then the story ends with Cables, who has only really shown up in this last act of the story. Well, he shoots the magic wolf stone off of Drew Drew's head, and then he stamps on it and destroys it, and that's the end. But as you will notice, well, Captain America, he still transforms, so we get a whole other issue of this. And this one is an Affinity Wars crossover, because that's what you really want. You want to tie into a big crossover and for your tie-in issue to resolve Captain Alsatian. Uh, this issue is its pretty pointless. It's just dealing with all the unresolved parts of the actual story. Captain America, he gets transformed back into a human and he's attacked by one of the double gangers from Affinity Wars. And then Captain America, he's back to normal and... Insultingly, this entire story that was built around Captain America going to find his friend who went missing, well, it, he just decides that he doesn't really like being Captain America's pilot and he quits his job. So the whole story served no purpose. It was, it was quite literally a shaggy dog story. Then Captain America, he just hires Moonstalker to be his new pilot. There's no real reason for him to do this. He doesn't know Moonstalker. For all he knows, Moonstalker could have like a criminal record or not even have any real pilot experience. Uh, meanwhile, Dennis Demolition, he is attacked by his double ganger and we have a backup story or subplot not interspersed with the main story. This is all about Falcon Man who has now to do with the whole Wary Wolf story. He's got a new costume and he's showing it off. This is meant to like reintroduce him. And this one it actually does a little bit of continuity fixing. Explaining why Captain America, why Captain America seemed to be leading the Avengers in Affinity Wars and some other crossover appearances when he isn't actually the team's current leader. Uh, we've got some cameos there from an odd assortment of Avengers, Falcon Man, The Flash, Captain America, she Oaks, and Captain Marvel's there, the real one, Monica Rambeau. And there, there's Dr. Droom because, well, Marky Mark, he really did want to push Dr. Droom. You'd think that these two women here, who Dr. Droom mentally enslaved and abused, you think they'd maybe be a bit more uncomfortable about being around them. And that is the end. A disaster that didn't have to be a disaster, but it is. I didn't recommend this as anything more than a curiosity. Uh, there could be a good story in there. Uh, there could be two good stories, actually, but we got this instead. I rated seven thumbs up.